In this Easy Ed video lecture, we will be learning what is kinetics of particles, Newton's second law, and D'Alembert's principle. Let us understand what is kinetics of particles. Consider a boy playing football. He scores a goal from 30 yards. Now we will analyze the motion of the ball. The factors involved are force with which the ball was hit, speed of the ball, type of motion and time taken by the ball to travel 30 yards. So kinetics of particles involves the motion analysis of moving particle taking into account the forces responsible for the motion. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. Let us consider two balls of different mass. Suppose the first ball, red in color, weighs 1 kg and the second ball, blue in color, weighs 4 kg. Let's put these balls into an air pressure cannon which will apply equal amount of force to pull the balls. When the force is applied, the red ball travels faster and farther than the blue ball. This shows that objects having less mass travels faster than the objects having more mass. So Newton's second law says that the strength of the force applied is equal to the mass involved multiplied by acceleration applied to it. Newton's second law is basically used to determine the acceleration of the particle. Consider a car of mass m being pulled up an inclined plane by force p applied parallel to the plane. Let mu k be the coefficient of friction between the car and the plane. So the friction force will act opposite to the direction of motion of the car which is mu k multiplied by n and the normal force will act to oppose the weight of the car. Therefore steps to determine the acceleration of the car are as follows. Step 1. Draw the free body diagram of the car showing all the forces acting on it. Step 2. Beside free body diagram draw kinetic diagram showing m a vector acting on the car. Step 3. Apply Newton's second law equation in x direction we get equation 1. Now apply Newton's law equation in y direction. We get equation 2. Substituting the value of n in equation 1, we get the acceleration of the car. Let us apply Newton's second law by considering a problem. Two blocks P and Q are held stationary 15 meters apart on a 30 degree inclined plane. The kinetic coefficient of friction between P and plane is 0.3 and between Q and plane is 0.1. If the blocks are released simultaneously, calculate the time taken and distance traveled by each block before they are on the verge of collision. Now the acceleration depends on the value of coefficient of kinetic friction mu k, angle of inclination of the plane and weight of the block. Consider a block of weight w moving down an inclined plane of angle theta. Step 1. Draw the free body diagram of block showing all forces. Step 2. Draw the corresponding kinetic diagram showing m a vector. Step 3. Apply Newton's second law of equation in y direction and x direction. On substituting the value of n in equation 2, we get the general relation of acceleration of block sliding on inclined plane. Substituting the values of mu and theta for block p and block q, we get the respective acceleration of block. Since acceleration of block Q is more than the acceleration of block P, the two blocks will collide soon. Let block P travel x meters and before block Q collides, therefore block Q travels x plus 15 meters in the same interval of time. Writing the initial condition for block P, using the equation for uniform acceleration, we get equation 4. Now writing initial condition for block Q and using equation for uniform acceleration, we get equation 5. Solving equation 4 and 5 simultaneously, we get distance at which the blocks will collide and the time taken for the collision. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. The only difference between applying Newton's second law equation to rectilinear motion and curvilinear motion is the change in kinetic diagram. In curvilinear motion, the m, a vector, is split into two components, normal acceleration acting towards the radius of curvature and tangential acceleration acting tangent to the path. 
Consider a problem on curvilinear motion applying Newton's second law. A bob of 2 meter pendulum describes an arc of a circle in a vertical plane. If the tension in the string is 5 times the weight of the bob for the position shown, find the velocity and acceleration of the bob in that position. Bob is performing curvilinear motion. Step 1. Draw the free body diagram of the bob showing all forces. Step 2. Draw the corresponding kinetic diagram showing MA vector split in two components, normal acceleration and tangential acceleration. Step 3. Apply Newton's second law of equation in y direction and x direction. We get the acceleration in normal direction and tangential direction. Then on evaluating we get the total acceleration and velocity with which the bob is moving. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. D. Alembert's principle is an alternative form of Newton's second law of motion, stated by the 18th century French polymath John Leron D. Alembert. Let us understand D. Alembert's principle by an example. Consider a car of mass M is being pushed by four men, that is, a number of forces are acting on the car. Due to these forces, a resultant force R acts on the car and car moves with acceleration A. Now consider all these forces into one system. If we can apply equal amount of force, that is M A, in opposite direction, then the system will come to rest. Now this whole system is said to be in dynamic equilibrium state as it is not moving. So according to D. Alembert principle, if system is in dynamic equilibrium, then the given equation will satisfy the system. This MA force applied in opposite direction is also called the inertia of force. Let us apply the principle given by John Lee Rond D. Alembert. Consider a block of mass 40 kg acted upon by a force P, which acts at an angle theta 30 degree with horizontal. Due to this force, block is moving with acceleration of 2 meter per second square. Given that the coefficient of friction mu k equals 0 0.3, find force P. Use D. Alembert's principle. We will consider the motion of block in a system. Inertia force M A is applied in the opposite direction. Therefore, by D. Alembert's principle, summation of all forces and product of mass and acceleration equals zero. Applying D. Alembert's principle in x direction, we get equation one. Now applying D. Alembert's principle in y direction, we get equation two. Solving equation 1 and 2 simultaneously, we get the value of force P. Let us take a quick overview of what we have learned in this Easy Ed video lecture. We have seen what kinetics of particles is by considering a boy playing football and basic terms like force, speed, type of motion and time taken by the ball to reach 30 yards. Then we have stated Newton's second law that the strength of the force applied is equal to the mass involved multiplied by the acceleration applied to it. In this example, we have taken two balls of different masses and analyzed that the ball with light mass travels faster and farther than the ball with heavy mass, which satisfies Newton's second law. After understanding Newton's second law, we have applied Newton's second law to rectilinear motion and curvilinear motion and steps to determine the acceleration of a car in a rectilinear motion. To find acceleration in curvilinear motion, we split MA component along normal direction and tangential direction. That's the only difference between finding acceleration in rectilinear motion and curvilinear motion. Finally, D. Alembert's principle which states that if the summation of forces and product of mass and acceleration is zero, then the system is said to be in equilibrium. Here we have considered an example of four men pushing a car and inertia force is acting opposite in direction of motion so that the system is in equilibrium. So this is the overview of our video lecture.